This film has been made by a group of teenagers from Bury St Edmunds. The aim is to explain issues surrounding sexuality and the challenges that young people face in understanding their sexuality and what it means to them. I'm Alex Griffin. I'm 19 years old. I'm currently at university in London where I'm studying philosophy. I very much enjoy things like literature and art, mostly poetry, um, particularly the Romantic period. I suppose I wake up, have a shower, do my makeup, get dressed, and then sit about reading poetry all day <laughs> until I have to go to a philosophy lecture. Military song out there, out there. A military song out there, out there. A military song out there, out there. Uh, my name is Loz. I've lived in Bury all my life. I was born in the hospital here. I'm now in the army, just finished my basic training. So I'll be going off to do some more training soon. Main hobbies and interests at the moment are just going out for runs, keep myself fit and see my friends in my spare time when I can. I've just been doing the army for 14 weeks now, just a basic training, and uh, I've loved every single minute of it so far and hope to for the rest of my career. Lessons usually start from about half eight, which will involve drill lessons, PT, map reading, or um, like assault courses, till about six o'clock every day. We have a brief for the next day and the rest of the night is usually your own to catch up on all your ironing and your diary and there's a lot of ironing involved. I'm just packing to go back to camp, to go back to work. I'm really looking forward to going back to camp and uh, seeing the guys in the new year. I kind of just see myself as just any normal 19 year old. Just I've got an exciting job. When I'm out with my friends I do come across as quite an outspoken and uh, energetic character. Hey, I'm Joe Weaver and um, I live in Bury and I promote lots of gigs and events, uh, work with a lot of bands, um, manage a few artists and it's everything I do, I'm always doing something related to music. I'm possibly on an event at a new venue I'm working at called The Apex, which is a multi-million pound venue which is open in Bury, and um, it's kind of the first event that I've put on, and I wanted it to be quite personal to the local bands in the area because it is their new local venue. Also bringing uh, my clothing label down, Sad Panda Clothing. The whole idea of our clothing company is to sell at events and promote the artists and people we work with. What I really enjoy about popular events is that it's creating something, creating an event that loads of people can come to and enjoy themselves at. Alex, Loz and Joe are three young people from Bury. They have shared their personal stories with us in order to make a film that truly represents young people of different sexual orientations. I suppose most people assume I'm a homosexual, but I'm not. I suppose it's my idea of what is beautiful. That's the only reason why anyone dresses the way they are, because that they're acting out their own ideal. And for me, it may sound odd, but I find women far more beautiful than men. And I find makeup and long hair, I find that my ideal, I find that what I find beautiful. I don't think I take it so far as to be something of a transvestite. I think I take it to a point where it's androgynous, mixing a bit of the feminine with the masculine. And I feel that is more of a representation of who I am. My girlfriend's beautiful. She's, um, she's an art student. She's um, bright blonde hair, likes her lipstick. When we do go out together, most people assume I'm a gay best friend and start chatting her up right in front of me. 
which is fine, it's a compliment. <laughs> I met her at a pub last year. I was immediately drawn to her. It was an immediate thing. I saw her across the pub and just thought, I, I'm going to make her my girlfriend. I kissed her and all her friends took the mick of her. She's like, oh, you made out with a gay man. And she just said, oh no, you can't be gay. And you know, we carried on meeting up and that's how we got together. It was, you know, shows them. <laughs> Coming out is the process of telling people what your sexual orientation is. It is not necessarily a one-off event. Lesbians, gay men and bisexual people may have to come out many times during their lives. It can be difficult and takes courage. Being gay in Bury is kind of, I don't know, I think it's a good area like, to come out in and be openly gay in because I haven't experienced any homophobia, just odd bits here and there, but nothing major. I've just gone with who I am and what I do, and it hasn't held me back. I think I was about seven years old, and um, we went to this holiday park, and there was a guy there who I'd met, and I mean, he was a boy, but I kind of had a bit of a crush on him. I was kind of like, oh, I fancy a guy. <laughs> and it didn't really bother me then, I didn't think much of it, but I just, um, because it continued on, and I mean, it was 13 when I first came out, when I started high school. It's a whole new world. It was new to everyone, not just me. You know, it was ninth year at high school. No one really knew how to react with it, let alone me. When I uh, realised I was a lesbian, it was when I was about 13, 14, on, a move, on the move up to upper school, where I just kind of really opened my eyes to it. It was tough at first, but after kind of feeling more comfortable with it and telling my friends about it, it made it a lot easier to bear with. To begin with, you don't really know what's going on and you didn't really know how to, you don't really know how to class yourself. I said I was bisexual when I first came out to everyone because I still didn't really know what I was and how I felt about things. So it's kind of just a little helping hand, but people do and are just bisexual and just constantly say that, uh, that they are and don't come out to be fully gay. But some pe most people do just use it to help them along the way, really. Well, the experience of realising that you're a lesbian is kind of just when you're looking at your friends in a different way and you're thinking, hang on a second, I actually like this girl and I don't just want to be friends with her. And there wasn't really a huge point in my life when I was all really interested in guys at all but it wasn't until I got to upper school where I started looking at people differently and thinking yeah actually I am a lesbian and I do like girls. When I came out to my mum um, I'd already been lots of my friends had already known that I was gay lots of people in school had known for like the last few months before that and um, it was a, a mate of mine a best mate of mine she said to me that I really should like let my mum know and um, it just kind of like spurred me on a bit and so I made the decision that night that I'd kind of drop, drop a hint that I wanted to tell her something. He actually said, I've got something to tell you, Mum. And I said, oh, what's that? Oh, I don't know if I can tell you. I knew it was coming. Mm. It, was, it was strange. I knew exactly what was coming and I just tried to make light of it, tried to make it easier for him to say. And I think I said something silly like, um, have you got somebody pregnant? <laughs> Knowing that it was yeah. not going to be. And he said, no. I said, well, in that case, you must be gay. Mm. And he said, how did you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just did. Mm, it was just amazing. little things over the past few years. I first came out to a friend of mine that I, a male friend that, was gay and was out just to a close group of friends as well and um, he kind of helped me and encouraged me to tell the rest of our close group of friends there's only about five or six people at first and then as really the school year went on I told more and more groups of friends that were in the year and apart from actually what ended up being my closest group of friends at the end of it which was quite hard because I'd be going to like their houses and they'll be talking about all their boyfriends and stuff and I'd sat quite uncomfortable because 
I wasn't being myself around them. When I did tell them, I don't see why I was so scared of it in the first place, because they're absolutely fine with it. It means a lot to me that my mum's very understanding about me being gay, and um, it just... It took a lot of weight off my shoulders so I could get on with who I am without having to keep a secret inside of me. I want my son to be happy yeah. and if the only way he's going to be happy is to be gay then that's fine. Yeah. Um, but I was very cautious um, and very, I think I said to you at the time, it's not an easy route yeah. and you just need to be very careful and you just need to keep yourself very safe. Family was a bit of a a tough one to do but it's always going to be tough. My dad actually just sat me down one day and asked me whether I was a lesbian and I said yeah and he said that's fine but you know when you get married you're both wearing a dress. That was quite a decent reaction. They kind of already knew before I told them but just actually sitting down and telling them is just a nice release to have. I felt like there was something, a mould I had to fit into. I had to be the stereotypical gay guy in order to fit in with the people around me, but I, as if people expected me to act a certain way. If I were to define myself by my heterosexuality, I wouldn't be who I am. Like, I'd rather be who I am and stuff anyone who doesn't like it, because there are plenty of other people who do. I'm mostly attracted to Lord Byron for his character for his conflictions. He understood people very well, and he understood himself very well, and he knew that he wouldn't fit in everywhere. Um, Lord Byron was a romantic poet who was quite notorious for his sexuality. He um, was driven out of England in 1816 due to the vicious rumours circulating about his sexuality. He was something of an outcast and something of a victim of his own time, really which I think today has no place. He was strong enough and he was brave enough to say, right, I'll leave. And he did leave, he left and never came back and he led a happier life for it. So I suppose it's the bravery to be himself and not be who anyone wants him to be. Many people have been gay throughout history. They're all different people. They weren't all feminine people who um, acted girly, who dressed in pink. All of that has nothing to do with being gay. The one thing about being gay is just you being someone who likes and loves people of the same sexuality. And other than that, it should have no effect on your life whatsoever. Just from saying, this is who I am, and I'm not going to change for anyone, I have become more confident. And I think that's something people have noticed in me that just by going my own way and doing my own thing, being me and not caring what the world wants me to be, it's made me become more of a part of the world. Being gay really isn't a huge part of my life, it's just something that I am. I'd say before anything in the list of what I am, I'm a daughter, a sister, I'm in the army, and at the end of it is that you're gay because it's not that big a part of your life, it's just who you are. Being gay has little effect on anything I do. You know, if, unless I'm going out with you, it shouldn't make a difference um, because I am who I am and my sexuality doesn't make me who I am, it's just a part of me. Having Joe as a gay son is no different. As long as he's happy, then that's all the mother could ask, really. I don't think that sexuality defines anyone by who they are. I think personality is what defines people. To people of that age that think they're going to, you know, come to terms with the fact that they're a lesbian, they just, just need to relax, find someone they can talk to about it, because keeping it to yourself isn't the way to go. Just find someone close to you that you can trust. Someone who cares about you that much really should care about who you are. You know, it's not who they want you to be, it's who you want to be. As a young person who feels that they are ready to come out, it is important to find somebody that you trust. 24-year-old Naomi from Cambridge believes that the experience brought her closer to her best friend Rick when he confided in her about being gay. We were at my house and it was after school and we were sat on my sofa in the lounge. We um, 
he sat down and said, uh, I have something to tell you. And he asked me to guess what it was. And I made a couple of, I made a couple of guesses. Some, some were ridiculous in hindsight. But um, I think it was because um, at that point, perhaps he didn't want to say the sentence himself. He wanted me to, to sort of say it for him. Um, but I remember it very, very, very vividly. And um, I remember it as being um, possibly one of the closest encounters that I've had with somebody, certainly on a, um, a friendship level. I, I hope, for his sake, that it was a situation which he felt very safe in, and I hope that I made him feel safe and comfortable for, for that conversation to take place. Knowing that somebody felt that they could trust me that much with something which they hadn't told anybody else at that point and were still coming to terms with themselves is a huge privilege. And I am honoured to be um, Rick's friend. And I am particularly honoured. And I was at the time as well that he had chosen to, to talk to me about it and that he felt that he could come to me. I think if I was going to give some advice to somebody who thought that perhaps one of their friends was gay, if they say that they want to talk about something, just sit with them and have a chat and be open-minded and be supportive and let them know that they are loved. Um, I think that's the only advice I can give, really. Sarah Friswell, the public relations manager at the Cathedral in Bury St Edmunds, explains that the church is a place where young people of any sexuality would be welcome and offered emotional support, despite the misconceptions that many people have about Christianity and homosexuality. Well, the issue of homosexuality is um, seen in the media um, as, as something that the church is against. Um, personally, I find this a, a very difficult thing to deal with, um, not, not the issue, but the fact that people are against it, because it's just totally against uh, Christian teaching, in my belief. Um, the God that I believe in is one who is a God of love and uh, treats everybody equally and fairly. And so, um, although for, for many people um, it, it is something that they feel very negative about, um, I don't believe that's true to Christian, the Christian faith. The church is there for your whole life. It, it's, it's a journey, it's alongside people. And even if you don't believe in the Christian faith yourself, the people who are Christians are there to offer care. Any kind of issues to do with getting through life, that's one of the things that church is really good at doing. Um, you'll always find people willing to listen. And I think that's what's the most important thing, is a willingness to um, just sit alongside somebody and listen. For any person, a young person who's just sort of setting out on life and finding out a bit about the, uh, the wide world around them and is, is, is unsure in themselves uh, you know, about, about who they are, I would just, uh, my advice would be, be totally true to yourself. You are loved by God no matter who you are, what you are, what you think. For me, the core message of what the Bible is about is about truth. That's what, how we should live our lives. We should all be true to who we are. And it uh, doesn't matter what those issues are, you know, live, live your life to the full is what I would say. Despite an increase in tolerance and acceptance surrounding issues of sexuality in society, there is still a way to go in eradicating homophobia and educating people, as Debbie Charles from the Suffolk Hate Crime Service explains. Now in Suffolk in the last year, we've had approximately 650 incidents that have been reported through to the police or ourselves and of that between 10 and 15 percent are related to sexual orientation so it's, it's a large number but we know there's more going on out there than there's actually people reporting incidents to us. The most frequent we have is probably graffiti we have quite a lot and that's people now actually recognizing that it's not acceptable to write things that are homophobic on walls, on buildings um, on fences. So people are now recognising that and coming forward and reporting it. So we're really pleased that people are recognising that. If we can stop the graffiti, then actually that ex it's not having that acceptance in an area, which means the community recognises it's not acceptable to target somebody. Yes, we have serious offences where people are target and there's assaults and that has to be taken very seriously. But a lot of the other cases, it's down to education. 
and an acceptance of other people. Any person that's a victim of a hate crime should report it. It will always be taken seriously. And we, ne we need to know what's going on in an area. If we don't hear about it, we can't help and we can't do something about it. In high school, there's always going to be torments of people who will say things, but ultimately they're not your friends. So from our group of friends who were around Rick, I don't think anybody acted very differently. And if they did, then I don't know about it. And if I do find out about it, then I might have to have a word with them because I would hope that they didn't. If an incident happens at school, schools in Suffolk now report and record those. So if an incident happens of a sexual orientation, a pupil should tell a teacher, member of staff, or if they don't feel able to tell the school, tell a parent who can then report it on their behalf and record that in schools. And we have found that some incidents, if they haven't been reported in school, then it has ended up as an incident outside of school because it's escalated. It's the education is important for all people. Um, for all hate crime, most of it, as we said, is ignorance. It's down to not understanding what's happening to other people. As the individuals in this film have expressed, your sexuality is not something to feel afraid or ashamed of nor does it define who you are. Discovering your sexuality and living openly as a gay, lesbian or bisexual young person is a journey that each individual must take in their own time. Everybody has the right to be loved, feel safe and be happy regardless of their sexual orientation. I'd say if you didn't know what sexuality you are then you just need to wait and see how relationships with people progress because that's really the only way that you're going to find out if you're a bit unsure about it. If you have worries or fears that you're homosexual, it's nothing to be worried about. It's entirely natural. If you embrace it, you'll be happier. My sexuality means a lot to me um, because it is a major part of who I am, but it doesn't make me who I am. You know, it doesn't change the way I act, it doesn't change what I'm into. It's all about love in the first place. It's, in the end, you will, you'll find someone, and it doesn't matter of what sex. It's that there's love there. Military song out there, out there. A military song out there, out there. A military song out there.